Okay, the commission will come to order. Um, I uh, first uh, want to welcome everyone to the commission's July 2022 meeting. Um, as I'm sure um, many of you know, or most of you know, we tried to begin this in the commission room uh, earlier today, and we had a technical difficulty in um, telecasting the, the feed out uh, to the public. Um, and se seeing this is a public meeting, uh, we wanted to, uh, and, and largely about OSRA and making sure that we've communicated what we can on OSRA, uh, the, the Ocean Shipping Reform Act, uh, we decided it was more important uh, to have the meeting um, be viewable by the general public than be uh, in the commission room in person for us. So we are all coming from our offices uh, remotely to do this. And I do again want to apologize to any uh, uh, members of the public that uh, showed up to see us uh, in person. Um, I also um, do want to uh, um, well, before I, I'm going to repeat some of the stuff that I did say earlier uh, because uh, it was not, uh, it, the, the, my audio wasn't um, uh, hearable. So before we begin, I do want to acknowledge some staffing changes at the commission. Um, I won't go into depth in this since earlier today uh, in my opening remarks, I already talked about it, but um, both our director of uh, the Bureau of Enforcement, uh, Ben Trogdon, and our general counsel, Steve Anderson, are leaving the commission after many years of service, um, both to the commission um, and, uh, and to the country. Um, and I really, really uh, want to thank you both for your service to the commission and uh, the people of the United States. Uh, I will note that um, all the commissioners uh, spoke uh, individually, I think, to um, to re enhance that, and I don't know if we'll have time for that right now, but um, we really, really appreciate their service. Um, I, I welcomed uh, some new uh, staffers. Um, I won't do that ag again, um, but uh, but we'll um, obviously we're adding a lot of, of uh, new staff now, and part of that is because of the needs behind uh, implementing uh, the Ocean Shipping Reform Act. Since the passage of OSRA in June and its signing by the president, we've received lots of inquiries about the law and what it means for the industry. Uh, today, we will discuss some of the most important elements of this legislation and cover, cover some of what it means for industry stakeholders. Uh, for the commission, much of this uh, information is not new, but I think the session will hopefully be informative for the public viewers of today's meeting and serve as a way for us to exchange notes and make sure that um, everyone's on the same page regarding our implementation agenda. And uh, we already had a closed session today. Um, the uh, closed session, we were discussing uh, the uh, OSRA implementation as well, the rulemaking directed by Congress to address unreasonable refusal, refusal to deal or negotiate with respect to vessel space accommodations provided by an ocean common carrier. I would note that we are in compliance with Congress's instruction to initiate this rulemaking within 30 days, and I do expect uh, that um, we will be, uh, we are close to uh, issuing a, a notice of proposed rulemaking in the weeks ahead. Um, there will be an opportunity for the public uh, to comment on that rulemaking. However, today's conversation was held in closed session uh, because we were discussing and deliberating on policy choices, proposed text, and other internal matters that need to be resolved prior to the issuance of the uh, notice of proposed rulemaking. And because pre-disclosure of some of those issues could significantly frustrate implementation of the proposed agency action, we held that discussion in closed session, but in full accordance with the Sunshine Act. Uh, now with that, um, again, I wanna thank everybody and I wanna particularly thank our um, IT staff for getting us online and making sure that the public could uh, see and hear us um, today in this commission meeting. And with that, I will go to the secretary to announce on, for, for any announcements related to uh, to the meeting and to introduce the first item on the agenda. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I remind everyone, since this is virtual, please mute your microphone if you're not participating in the discussion and presentation. Um, I also would, would ask if, if anyone is uh, participating, particularly by phone, if you'd please uh, introduce yourself. If the chairman or, or others don't uh, acknowledge who you are, that will help us with considering the uh, the transcript and keeping it accurate. Um, Mr. Chairman, the first item on the agenda today is the staff briefing 
on Ocean Shipping Reform Act of 2022. The item will be presented by Lucille Marvin, Managing Director, and Steve Anderson, General Counsel. You can proceed, Ms. Marvin. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, Chairman Maffei, Commissioners Dai, Bensel, Sola, and Beckage. Thank you for the opportunity to discuss the Ocean Shipping Reform Act of 2022, or OSRA, in this public session. Um, as Mr. Cody said, uh, General Counsel Steve Anderson will be presenting with me. Our goal today is to inform the public not only about the status of implementation, implementation of OSRA at the FMC, but also to provide additional guidance on provisions that went immediately into effect when OSRA was signed by President Biden into law on June 16th. For ease of organization, instead of going through OSRA section by section, we've prioritized and grouped the law's provisions by topics of enforcement and consumer assistance with themes of exports throughout. Included in our presentation will be uh, information on rulemakings where relevant. Starting with the enforcement topic, I'll now turn the mic over to Steve to discuss key provisions concerning prohibitions in OSRA of 2022. Thanks. Thank you, Lucy, and good afternoon, Chairman and Commissioners. And let me start off by saying this thanks for the opportunity to have served here. I'm very grateful for the opportunity uh, to have learned from each of you as well as the rest of the Commission staff, and uh, I greatly appreciate that. So moving on to the topic at hand, um, sections five and seven of OSRA um, reorganize and add several new uh, prohibitions to the Commission's existing inventory of prohibited acts. I'm going to briefly touch on these self-executing enforcement provisions and then some of the actions that we're taking to fully implement them. Now let me start with retaliation. The former prohibited act for retaliation applied only to common carriers. But that was expanded in OSRA to now also prohibit retaliation by all regulated entities, which now includes marine terminal operators and ocean transportation intermediaries. In addition, the new retaliation prohibition covers more than just shippers and includes an agent of a shipper, an ocean transportation intermediary, and motor carriers. The new statutory text aligns with the fact finding 29 uh, recommendations, as well as the Commission's recent policy statement on retaliation. OSRA also clarified that the existing prohibit prohibition on unreasonable refusal to deal or negotiate includes situations regarding the provision of vessel space accommodations provided by an ocean common carrier. And there is also another new related provision that prohibits a common carrier from unreasonably refusing cargo space accommodations when available or resorting to other unfair or unjustly discriminatory methods. Both of these provisions related to vessel or cargo space uh, apply to both exports and imports and require new rulemakings. Uh, the Commission staff initiated the rulemaking on unreasonable refusal to deal immediately upon OSRA passage. And as already mentioned, we discussed that earlier this morning and we're very close to uh, being able to have a proposed rule out for public comment. OSRA also added several other prohibitions on the assessment of charges, the minimum invoice requirements for demurrage and detention billing, as well as associated provision that eliminates demurrage and detention charges for those invoices that do not comply. Commission has received many questions about the application of these sections. Initially, the questions were mostly focused on uh, what might be a perceived phase-in period for the minimum invoice requirements. Uh, there is none. The invoice requirements became effective immediately, and uh, soon after OSRA, we issued an advisory, and I issued a general counsel opinion to that effect. The Commission issued another advisory last Friday to again reiterate the immediate effect of the demerge and detention invoice provisions, and to make clear that the Commission will pursue enforcement action against conduct that may frustrate or circumvent the explicit OSRA billing requirements. That advisory was in response to input that we'd received from the shipping public, as well as observation of Commission staff, that some ocean carriers were delaying the billing process without any estimated compliance date. Further, there was some indication that shippers were being required to sign some sort of guarantee for future demerge and detention pay payment prior to releasing cargo 
reportedly while the ocean carrier billing was suspended in order to comply with OSRA. As you know, the Commission staff is paying close attention to this issue, and our area representatives are actively monitoring OSRA compliance at the port level. We've also solicited some very helpful in input from our uh, National Shippers Advisory Committee. And finally, Lucy's uh, Vessel Operating Common Carrier Audit Team is working directly with the ocean carriers to ensure that they are uh, clearly aware of the Commission's expectation on OSRA and the billing requirements. OSRA also uh, acknowledges that the Commission can adjust the required contents of an invoice through our future rulemaking. And we've been working on that again as a result of fact finding 29 and one of the rec interim recommendations. We received over 80 comments in response to the advanced notice of proposed rulemaking, and those were, are being considered and developed into a notice of proposed rulemaking on demerge and detention that we expect will be ready for the Commission consideration in early fall. Um, I think it's important also to note that any demerge and detention rules or rulemakings issued by the Commission, um, particularly those under OSRA, will only clarify the existing interpretive rule. In other words, any new rules will be in addition to, not in place of, the interpretive rule. Since the, the issue of the legitimacy of charges and billing is a central theme of OSRA, it may help at this point just to provide a, real, a short roundup of the three new avenues that now exist to challenge a non-compliant charge. The first one is through commission enforcement action and enforcement of these new prohibited acts related to assessing or invoicing charges. Um, essentially, this could be uh, enforcement action for any charge that doesn't comply with existing commission regulations, as well as an enforcement action for non-compliant demerge and in detention invoices. And in that case, OSRA also gave the Commission the authority to uh, order refunds in addition to civil penalties. The second avenue is that a party may invoke the self-executing OSRA provisions that eliminate demerge and detention charges applicable to an invoice that doesn't comply with the minimum invoice requirements contained in OSRA. And then the third avenue is that a party can take advantage of the new provision in OSRA on charge complaints. And I'm now going to turn it back over to Lucy Marvin, who's going to uh, discuss charge complaints. Um, thanks, Steve. Before I go into charge complaints, I just want to take a moment to say that the Commission's area representatives and our Bureau of Enforcement stand ready to pursue any enforcement actions on any of the new OSRA prohibitions that were just highlighted. Just wanted to, to um, just throw that out there. Um, so now, charge complaints. This provision, which is found in Section 10, enables shippers to submit to the FMC information about complaints of charges assessed by a common carrier. It requires the FMC to promptly investigate the charge for 41102 and 41104 compliance. This provision went into immediate effect on June 16th. By the way, it's worth mentioning that the burden of proof to establish reasonableness of detention and emerge charges is shifted to the carriers. Um, the FMC is authorized to order refunds and issue, issue civil penalties, as Steve mentioned. Um, this provision will require further policy development and a rulemaking to implement the mechanism for charge complaint review. However, until that happens, the Commission is accepting and investigating charge complaints through an interim process. We provided indus industry guidance on this interim process on July 14th, which can be found on our website, www.fmc.gov, and I'll review that guidance right now. So parties interested in disputing charges assessed by common carriers that they believe don't comply with OSRA, those people can submit a charge complaint by doing the following. Identify the common carrier, identify the specific alleged violations of OSRA, gather supporting documentation that includes invoices, bills of lading numbers, and evidence of whether the charges have been paid, confirm that the disputed charge was incurred on or after the enactment of, of OSRA 2022. And finally, submit all of this and any other materials that you think are relevant to charge complaints at fmc.gov. And that's one word, charge complaints at fmc.gov. Again, all of this is on our website. Um, so if you, you have any questions at all, um, refer to our website and by all means, um, call, our, call our, our, our caters office. Um, 
When the commission receives submission, sufficient information, we will promptly start an investigation, which could ultimately result in a civil penalty in order for refund of the charges paid. So that's charge complaints. Um, I'll, we'll now turn to provisions of OSRA that have a public informational or a consumer assistance focus. Section 11 of OSRA uh, states that the FMC must publish on its website Commissioner Dye's Fact Finding 29 report, International Ocean Transportation Supply Chain Engagement, and the Commission has done this. And again, that can be found on our website, www.fmc.gov. Section 17, moving on to other provisions, Section 17 uh, requires the FMC to establish a web page that allows for the submission of comments, complaints, concerns, reports of non-compliance, requests for investigation, and requests for alternative dispute resolution. We want to acknowledge how important it is for the public and the industry we regulate to be able to interact with the Commission through technology and our website. The uh, Commission staff has a plan for an interim solution that satisfies this requirement in OSRA. We are also currently mapping out long-term options for such a web page, and of course, we're going to keep everybody updated on that. Another sort of sub-provision in, in uh, Section 17 requires the FMC to maintain an Office of Consumer Affairs and Dispute Resolution Services to provide ombuds assistance, assistance, mediation, informal dispute resolution, and arbitration to resolve commercial household goods and shipments, uh, I'm sorry, household goods shipments and, and uh, passenger crews disputes. So the FMC not only maintains its caterers office, but over the last year, we've increased our staff uh, with an export specialist and analysts with ocean shipping experience to support the public in resolving commercial disputes that don't or shouldn't rise to the level of litigation. I urge the public in the shipping industry to use the service of caterers, especially if stakeholders don't want to go through the formal complaint avenues that we described earlier in our presentation, or if you just need someone to talk your, your dispute through, if you just need someone to talk with, um, caterers is the perfect way to do that. So our, our staff is standing by to talk to you and their contact info can also be found on our website. Um, so moving on, um, section 17 also requires the commission to increase its staff with not fewer than seven total positions to assist in investigations and oversight within the Bureau of Enforcement, Bureau of Certification and Licensing, the Office of Managing Director, Caters, and the Bureau of Trade Analysis. So the commission has 18 months to comply with this provision, but the hiring has is already underway or has actually been completed in some cases for these positions. And we're getting this done in FY22. We've got two additional attorneys in BOE, three additional area representatives, an additional staff person in the Bureau of Certification and Licensing, as well as in the Bureau of Trade Analysis, and two, um, two more staff indicators. Um, moving on, Section 19 of OSRA directs the FMC to enter into an agreement with the Transportation Research Board of the National Academies of Sciences, Engineering, and Medicine, under which the TRB will carry out a study and develop best practices for on-terminal or near-terminal chassis pools that provide service to marine terminal operators, motor carriers, railroads, and other stakeholders that use chassis pools with the goal of optimizing supply chain efficiency and effectiveness. Efforts to comply with this provision are already well underway. The FMC has until April 1st, 2023 to begin its work with the TRB, and we will definitely meet that goal um, with the expectation that the study will be completed and the FMC will post the best practices by January of 2024. Finally, OSRA contains certain reporting and publishing requirements for the Commission that we're already prepared to execute. Section 14 requires us to report to Congress concerning practices by state-owned, state-controlled, and certain foreign-owned ocean common carriers. Section 6 requires the Commission to annually publish on the FMC website false detention and demurrage invoice information and all penalties imposed or assessed against common carriers. And finally, Section 9 requires the FMC to publish a quarterly report describing the total import and export tonnage and the total loaded and empty TEUs um, per vessel making port in the U.S. and its territories. 
This concludes our presentation on commission uh, on um, I'm sorry on OSRA implementation. Uh, we look forward to keeping the public apprised of implementation progress, and we will continue to issue industry advisories or guidance when necessary. Thank you for your time today, and we look forward to any questions that the commissioners may have. Thank you very much, Managing Director Marvin and General Counsel uh, Anderson. Um, very uh, good, good if, uh, you know, abbreviated presentation, but I think that's what you need to do. Um, I will say I uh, really thank all the staff uh, behind uh, all of those efforts. This is really a complete uh, commission uh, to everybody on deck, all hands on deck, uh, as they say. Um, I will say that it is rare, I think, for uh, Congress to provide uh, quite as an uh, uh, explicit to do list as they did for us. So uh, we have our work cut out for us. And I, I will say that um, our uh, our that that the Congress would indeed pass pass OSRA, despite some people um, believing to the contrary, and therefore our starting of many things, particularly the uh, detention and demerge rule that was, was already underway uh, before Congress officially ordered us to do it, um, and many of these other things um, is really a, a testament to our staff and uh, how well um, we have uh, anticipated what Congress would want, but we still have so much work ahead of us. So thank you to everybody. Uh, we'll now go to comments and uh, questions from the commissioners. Commissioner Dye. Thank you very much, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate it. Um, and I agree with your comments. Thank you very much. I want to briefly speak about Section 7 of OSRA 2022 concerning information on D and D invoices, in addition to the comments of the general counsel. Those of you who have dealt with me know I do not support painting any of our stakeholders, including ocean carriers, with a broad brush. In that regard, I commend the ocean carriers that are in compliance now and were prepared on the date of enactment to comply with the new law. In fact, I'm in favor of publishing information of this type on, on compliance for the benefit of our exporters and importers in the future. As regard invoices, our general counsel has published two advisories, as he explained, to clarify that the statute provides no phase in. Upon signing on June 16th, the invoice requirements of Section 7 were effective. All carriers had the same opportunity to comply. The rule also recognized that the FMC is preparing a billing rule that may deal with some of the challenges that have arisen. Regardless, no substitute process or phase in may be substituted for compliance with Section 7. Until compliance is in effect, no charges may be invoiced. Shippers may seem documentation to the FMC for investigation for certain requirements that they were required to sign in order to retrieve their cargo. What we expect of our carriers is compliance. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I appreciate this opportunity. I not only thank you, uh, Commissioner Dye, but completely associate myself with your remarks. This is the law of the land. If you have a complaint about it, we have we can point you to Capitol Hill or to the White House. But our job is to implement it. The effective date was immediate upon enactment. Uh, thank you for your comments, Commissioner Dye. Uh, Commissioner Benson. Uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. I had uh, one uh, question comment. Uh, the uh, charge language, charge complaints. Um, uh, essentially, we have new jurisdiction to assess under the prohibited acts sections uh, charges. Uh, and charges is uh, not defined in the statute, uh, uh, but I would uh, construe it to be assessments. Uh, or synonymous to assessments. Uh, so while uh, there's re reference to uh, detention and demurrage, there's a wide range of other uh, charges uh, that are provided or or, or assessed 
on the shipping uh, community, uh, congestion surcharges, uh, fuel, a bunker fuel surcharges. And I just want to get a sense of uh, of where we are on defining uh, our, the extent of our jurisdiction over the uh, these uh, charges in the future. Uh, I know we're still early in the process uh, of defining this, but um, uh, I, my construction is that it uh, allows us a lot of authority to uh, to assess uh, the the reasonableness of some of these uh, add on charges. Uh, uh, Steve, I'd, I'd put that uh, question to you. Uh, Yes, sir. I has the OSRA, nor do does our existing statutory authority define the term charges for this purpose. And so, I, I agree generally that the commission obviously has an opportunity here to speak about how it wants to define that term. And in the context of the charge complaint uh, statutory text, um, I think that that could be done either through a policy statement or a future rulemaking. And I know. The team that is uh, aggressively looking at how to um, how to process charge complaints, how we're going to deal with them, will be considering that. I think that there is some support in the legislation for a broad reading of the term charges because other places in the legislation there's a narrow reading, and specifically in the areas where it, it limits our authority to demerge and detention charges. And that is not the case when it comes to charge complaints, nor in the new prohibited act, which I think is. Um, Section uh, 14 of the Common Carrier Prohibited Acts, which also uses a generic term charges. I think also a broad application could be applied there, sir. Uh, well, it's uh, right now we have fairly limited uh, authority, uh, mostly on procedural grounds on whether they've posted it uh, appropriately. Uh, but I do think it's important to look at this term in its broadest context. Uh, so uh, thank you for the, the response. Uh, no further questions, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Commissioner uh, Benzel. Commissioner Sola. Got it. Thank you. Um, I believe that this is the first uh, public outreach that we have for the Ocean Shipping Reform Act, and I think it's a, a, a very good overview. Um, with that being said, more of our uh, outreach uh, to our constituents is going to be through caters and also through our area representatives. And uh, I, I believe that, you know, we're going to have to, uh, Congress has, has authorized us to put in a play in a plan uh, to reinforce a lot of staffing uh, in those areas and also to have a robust staffing uh, throughout uh, the commission. So I, I foresee a, uh, a lot of changes in a good way that are going to be coming forward in the next 12 months and look forward to those. Thank you. Uh, and no need for a response, but OK. Um, uh, thank you very much, uh, Commissioner Sola. Commissioner Beckage. OK, um, Commissioner Beckage uh, has no uh, comment or question at this time. Um, I do have a question, uh, Ms. Marvin. You mentioned uh, incoming charge complaints. Um, I don't need a specific number, but do, can you give me any sense of how many are coming in and is are they all on detention and demerge or are they, are they on some of the other kinds of uh, fees and charges that uh, Commissioner Bensel mentions? Um, thanks for the question, sir. Um, we do have, uh, um, a, I can tell you, we've had a total of seven actually that have come in. Um, four with, have been within the time frame of when, you know, OSRA was enacted. Three came, th those issues were before the enactment of OSRA. So unfortunately, um, uh, those didn't qualify for this process. Um, and so far, uh, yes, they, they seem to be from, you know, detention and demerge type charges. So uh, obviously we'll keep you posted on, on, you know, those tallies and what's coming in, but, um, uh, we do appreciate that the public is already taking advantage of of this, and um, and we will they, they get acknowledgments right away, and we, as it says here, we start investigating as soon as we get all the required documentation. So it seems to be working fine so far. Uh, thank you. Now, Ms. Marvin, you sure. also had um, the uh, the audit uh, program. This is a program that the 
FMC conducts to have ongoing um, uh, one on one contact with the major carriers uh, to uh, help ensure that they're in compliance and advise them. Um, you can further define it if you wish, but um, I understand you're going to be speaking, you know, doing your, your round in the next month or, or so. Can you, are you going to be um, emphasizing some best practices with regard to some of these charge complaints, um, both in anticipation of, of eventual rules, but also in terms of uh, just, you know, ensuring that they do uh, understand and comply with uh, OSRA as we understand it? Yes, sir, we absolutely will. Um, earlier, we sent out letters not only to the nine carriers who are directly involved in the VOCC audit program, but also um, we sent uh, you know, letters to um, actually the top 25. And in that letter, we asked the carriers to confirm that they acknowledged that you know, OSRO is now the law of the land, that they needed to be in compliance with those uh, provisions that uh, we're self-executing and that we to be prepared to speak with us um, in our our August meetings that we have planned, which are coming right up right around the corner um, about these these self-executing provisions um, in addition, sir, to the export issue and things like that. So yes, we will be talking in depth about about this um, with them and we'll have a we'll have a report back. Thank you, uh, um, Ms. Marvin. Um, I'm happy to uh, either do another round or do or um, let, let me let me just quickly see. I have one other question, I think, for Mr. Anderson, um, but let me see if uh, any of the other commissioners have questions or, or another additional comments based on what's been said so far. Commissioner Dye. I thank you, Mr. Chairman. No further questions. Okay, hey, Commissioner Benzel. I think you're muted. Yep, uh, uh, Mr. Chairman, thank, uh, thank you. Uh, I have no further questions, but I did want to mention, um, uh, you know, there's a lot of focus as, as there should be on on uh, enf enforcement and, and, and new obligations created by the Ocean Shipping Reform Act. But I do think we, we need to uh, not lose sight of the fact that the industry has uh, uh, transported and carried more cargo than they've ever carried before. Um, albeit with some some issues and the, the people the, uh, that are in the industry uh, providing this service have done this through the, the ravages of the pandemic. So uh, so while our focus is on our statutory mandate, uh, we really do need to uh, also acknowledge uh, all of the work that has been uh, done uh, providing uh, transportation service to the to this country. So but uh, no further uh, questions, uh, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, um, Commissioner Sullen. No questions, Mr. Chairman. Okay, I understand, Commissioner Beckett, you're having an audio problem out, but you're also good. Um, um, Mr. Chairman, if I could, oh, my I think yeah, I'm absolutely, re -re Commissioner, Commissioner Beckett. Uh, and I just wanted to play off of what Commissioner Bensel said, and uh, moving more cargo and record cargo in many places, including Southern California, uh, in spite of the pandemic and on top of everything else. Let's redesign the shipping rules. I mean, I think we're uh, we're doing all we can and then some. And I'm glad uh, that we are uh, uh, here and focusing on you know uh, dispute resolution and keeping the marketplace fair and in light of the peaks and valleys and the boomer bust uh, conditions of the economy right now and the international shipping community. And uh, you know, I'm uh, again. Uh, I think it's. Uh, important to recognize the workers in the supply chain. In fact, I would I would say that now, uh, you know, uh, that uh, 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 people are being memorialized for various and, uh, reasons around the capital right now. Uh, let's not forget the uh, people that are working through the supply chain crisis, you know, and they, they deserve recognition above and beyond uh, because they truly have kept the economy going in light of all uh, infrastructure defects, uh, congestion, uh, you know, uh, uh, too much opportunism perhaps, and uh, overzealous consumerism. So uh, despite it all, um, you know, it seems like we're moving forward and this is a, 
uh, all going to help propel the Austra legislation uh, to get teeth and uh, get engagement, involvement, and buy-in. And uh, you know, we, you, you before me, uh, commissioners, you've uh, done a good job of trying to open lines of communication and uh, to bring more input in. Um, and uh, I think now it's it's going to be incumbent upon us as an agency to to put that to work and uh, hopefully create a more efficient um, regulatory system and a fairer one that uh, uh, continues to uh, uh, reinforce the idea that we need to keep moving cargo. So uh, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you again, Commissioner Beckage. Um, I do have a one final comment, but and then I want uh, the general counsel to respond. Maybe even the managing director, if if, if appropriate. But um, it does seem to me this is getting back to what uh, Commissioner Benzel was talking about about uh, certain charge complaints that don't have to do with just detention and demurrage. Uh, the interpretive rule on detention and demurrage um, absolutely is uh, binding, and uh, we you know you, you mentioned that we're clarifying that, Mr. Anderson. I agree with you. It's a clarification of it or a reinforcement of it. Um, there are there are instances of uh, detention and demurrage that are unreasonable, and we need to get to the bottom of that. But I would note that their detention demurrage is also quite essential to keeping cargo flowing. And that when there is a reasonable detention and demurrage charge, that is fine. However, there are other kinds of charges, such as congestion surcharges, um, when the entire world has been congested for two years, uh, peak season charges. Uh, other kinds of things, uh, value added charges, they're called all sorts of things. I don't see them as anything other than a addition to the rate that is not being, uh, that's not being transparent. It's, it's like when you get your cable bill and you, you signed up for the, you know, the nine, uh, you know, the $99 cable per month and somehow your cable bill gets to be $180. Um, and you look at that and some of it's government, but a lot of it is additional fees. Well, I think the same thing is happening to shippers in this country. So I ask you, uh, um, Mr. Anderson, um, as, as Commissioner Benzel said, it was a little bit uh, unclear whether we had the authority uh, to um, get at, for lack of a better term, get at these charges um, if they were properly uh, um, noticed, et cetera. It was, um, does OSRA give us um, in, in section seven or in other areas, um, any addition or, or does it illuminate any additional uh, authority to rein in some of those charges when they are, in my view, in, in any way unreasonable? So thanks for that question. I, I think it does give the commission to uh, to consider adopting a policy that would broaden that and would do what you say. So the two, the two places as you know, where, where charges are, are listed generically, one's in the new prohibited acts in section A14, and then in the charge complaint section. Um, those refer back to any charges that aren't compliant with the overall prohibited acts that apply to common carriers, as well as the general prohibitions on all regulated entities. Uh, the general prohibitions include the prohibitions and the requirements for the practices in handling property, what we call 41102C, under which the interpretive rule is issued. So um, I think it could it could provide expanded authority. I think the commission would have to define what charges look like, either through, it could be done through a case, through adjudication, or it could be done through a policy statement, or it could be done through a rulemaking. Um, I think the charge complaint process is going to eventually require a rulemaking, so that might be one place for the commission to, to define that term charges and the scope of the term, which would also allow for the opportunity for the public to comment. Thank you very much. I, th I think that was a very good and concise answer. I, um, I am Mr. going Chairman? to. Yes, absolutely, Commissioner Dye. Uh, one of my recommendations in fact finding 29 was that we assess charges, surcharges, accessorials that are implemented through tariffs. Uh, right now, the the um, the case law on these tariff charges is light, and um, I, I do think that um, uh, the commission needs more more tools, especially um, 
since there in many contracts um, in addition simply in addition to the freight rate so i i, I support this this uh, endeavor thank you thank you i mean my thought here is is that um you know, eventually we will do the rulemaking on this or incorporate it into an existing rulemaking. But I, I, um, I'll put my colleagues on notice that I might be searching to see if there's consensus to move forward on a policy statement. I, I probably wouldn't want to do it unless I had everybody on board. So this is not something I'm going to uh, absolutely wouldn't force it through. But if there is a consensus on some policy, some generalized policy statement to at least uh, address um, these issues that, that, that uh, I mean, that these are not um, uh, you know, I, I don't think these are trivial. These uh, these added fees. Um, any other thoughts or comments? Any other thoughts or comments on anything that we've discussed as we get ready to end the commission meeting? Okay. Um, hearing none. I want to thank again, um, Mr. Anderson, Admiral Anderson. Thank you for your service, both to us and this country. Um, Ms. Marvin, thank you for your service too. Although since we'll you're, we're going to force you to continue it here. <laughs> um, and I want to thank the entire FMC staff, particularly uh, the curveball that uh, that uh, IT was given in, in trying to put this on today. I want to thank everybody who uh, is watching um, and uh, really appreciate um, uh, all of the flexibility that everyone has, has had. And uh, with that, without objection, the committee uh, stand, the commission stands adjourned.